Please stand and join in our opening song. Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing today? Good? It's a good day. Today we celebrate the feast of St. John Bosco. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, some of teachers might remember, or some older folks here might remember, but Father Cody Ross is a good friend of mine who was here at one point, too, as a seminarian. And this is one of his favorite saints uh, because he worked a lot with youth, and that's what St. John Bosco did. He taught a lot of people, especially orphans, especially a school of orphan boys. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, one of the miracles of St. John Bosco today. But during Catholic school weeks, it's Catholic schools week, it's important to just remember our teachers, all the people who educate us and help us to learn things along the way. And so St. John Bosco is a perfect patron for any of you teachers that are here present today. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who raised up the priest, St. John Bosco, as a father and teacher of the young, grant, we pray, that aflame with the same fire of love, we may seek out souls and serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, 
O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Bless the Lord, my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. O oh, bless, bless the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. He pardons all your iniquities. He is all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, counts you with compa- kindness and compassion. Oh, bless, bless the Lord, my soul. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Oh, bless, oh, bless the, the Lord, Lord my, my soul. soul. But the kindness of the Lord is from eternity to eternity towards those who fear him, and his justice toward his children's children among those who keep his covenant. Oh, bless the Lord, Lord, my my soul. soul. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child over, placed it in their midst, and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to tell you um, a story about St. John Bosco today, and probably a whole bunch of other stuff. So um, St. John Bosco was a saint that lived in Italy, and so he lived in, in Turin. If anybody ever heard of the Shroud of Turin, that's like the burial cloth that covered Jesus up that they still have, and it has the image of Jesus on it. That's the same city that he lived in and preached in. And so he worked with orphans, especially like an orphan boys' school. That was kind of the common thing for him to do. So this kind kind of happened to me the other day. On Sunday, this is a great thing, because it was Catholic Schools Week, there were so many people here, we almost ran out of the Eucharist, out out of the hosts. So when Deacon Brian and I see that that kind of thing is going to happen— we actually have to start, usually with just like one of your hands, you're breaking the hosts in half into smaller pieces, which takes some practice <laughs> and some agility and things like that. And we got all the way down to, there were only three hosts left in the tabernacle after, after that mass. Now, something sort of similar to that, but way more dramatic happened to St. John Bosco in, in one, one of the masses he was doing. So he had 360 students, 360 young people. And what ended up happening was that the sacristan, does anybody remember Father Peter's rules of engagement are 
he'll ask the question and you really got to think about if you know the answer before your hand shoots up in the air. I know that's a super hard, but it's a good practice and discipline. So I'm going to ask the question, does anybody know what a sacristan is or what they do? Does anybody know the job of a sacristan? Do you got an idea? Yeah, exactly. They prepare for the Mass. So you see people bringing out the vessels and setting up the book and sometimes lighting candles. So that's what the sacristan's job is. They make sure all the stuff that you need is actually out here, right? And you might have noticed this before at a Mass every once in a while, where like I'm starting to get stuff and all of a sudden I look and there's no host there. And then I whisper over to the altars and somebody goes, get me host. Sometimes that happens, right? So in this case... The uh, sacristan, so we all know that this is, the, this is the what? What do we call this vessel? The chalice, right? And so there's a vessel that looks a lot like this inside the tabernacle. Does anybody know what that one's called? That one's called the ciborium, the ciborium. If anybody knows any Italian out there, the word for food is cibo. And so like ciborium, it's so ciborium, that's it. So it looks just like this chalice. You'll see me take it out of the tab tabernacle later. So what happened is there were a bunch of hosts inside of the ciborium that the sacristan was supposed to put out to be consecrated here on the altar during the mass. And the sacristan forgot to take those out. So St. John Bosco said the mass like normal and he thought that there must be a lot of hosts inside the tabernacle. But it was kind of like what happened the other day. When he went to the tabernacle, there were only eight. There were only eight hosts, and there were 360 young people who were going to receive communion. He prayed. So he said, I, I don't know what else to do. So he prayed, and he started distributing the hosts. And he kept distributing the hosts. And all 360 people received communion that day. If you remember the story about Jesus, Jesus, when he multiplies the loaves, that same miracle happened to St. John Bosco. And one of the, the men who was the sacristan present that day, he eventually became a priest as well in the religious order that um, the Salesians that St. John Bosco created. And so that day, his prayer and being without was a Eucharistic miracle where the Lord actually multiplied himself and they distributed that. So we hear about these Eucharistic miracles happening in different places, right? So when we talk about the Eucharist, we're talking about what we start out with, right? We're talking about bread and wine that become the body and blood of Jesus. These are, this is a big topic, but I think that you guys could totally understand it. Well, we, none of us can understand it, so that's the good thing. We're all kind of on equal ground here. So Jesus, when he died on the cross, when he died on the cross, his sacrifice was for all humanity in the past, in the present, which is now, everybody living now, and in the future. In the past, the present, and the future. And do you know why Jesus is capable of doing that? Because he's God, we live here on earth, which means we live during time, right? We can look at our watch and we can see seconds ticking off and minutes ticking off and hours and things like that. And sometimes during class or Father Peter's homily, it seems like time is eternal, right? <laughs> like it's really long or something. But God lives in eternity, he lives in forever. So he doesn't live in time. So the passage of time that we experience here on earth is not the same for God, who is eternal. So what we do here at this altar is during the mass, the bread and the wine start out as this normal bread and wine, normal food produced in kind of a very, very normal way. And then here... The sacrifice that Jesus made, because it's eternal for all people, past, present, and future, it's made present again, but, but in a way that's not really violent, like the way Jesus died, in a way that we can all see and understand and receive him and repeat, 
over and over and over again. That's the essence of what happens here all the time, that the sacrifice that Jesus made for all people, for all time, is made present again. And he can do that because he's forever. He's eternal. He's not bound by that happening one time in history. He's allowed to make it present for all time. Now, here's one of the hard things to accept, right? So when I come over here to the chalice stack and everything, does everybody remember what this is called, the little plate? Anybody remember? Does anybody remember your vocab quiz of liturgical vessels? Anybody just yell it out if you think you know it. Pat, nice, good job. All right, here we go. Um, so this right now, just a piece of bread, just a piece of bread starts out like that. But when we say the prayers, the same words that Jesus said over bread at the Last Supper, this is my body, that prayer is what makes it Jesus' body. But yet, guess what? After I say those prayers, what does it still look like? Still looks like this, right? Because he wants it to be in a form that we can still receive him, that we can still receive him. And eating is one of the easiest ways that we can, that we can receive anything. And so one of the things that we have to remember about Jesus is that he, what's, what's like the smallest building block of what stuff is made of? What would we call that? Anyway, yeah. Chocolate. No, not chocolate. <laughs> the smallest building block of what everything is kind of made of, right? Say, are atoms? And then what, what other words do we use for that? It starts with an M. Like matter, right? So like we talk about matter. Things are, things are... So God is the creator of matter. He's the creator of the things that build other things. So the only person that can make one form of matter into a different form of matter is the creator. We can't do that because <laughs> that's not a power that we've been given. But the one who created everything, that's a really tiny miracle for the creator. A really tiny miracle that he gives us every single day. I'm going to give you a little example. When I give you this example, though, I want you to remember it's not the same as the Eucharist. What did, what did I just say? It's not the same as the Eucharist. It's what we call an example or an analogy stuff, okay? But, but it's just an illustration to give us some kind of a point here, okay? Um, who can tell me which one of these eggs is raw and which one is hard-boiled? Who knows which one? Okay, yeah. This one's raw. Nope. How about you? Yeah, so that's the thing. You know, it, it, can you tell? Can you tell if neither are hard-boiled or not? No, from, from the outside, you can't see that. It's not something that we're able to see. So it's not the same as the Eucharist, but things are not always what they look like, right? Some things are a little bit different than they appear. But one of these things, when it's hard-boiled, goes through a substantial change, right? And so sometimes we use this big fancy word that we say um, transubstantiation. That means that the bread is crossing over into becoming the body of Jesus, right? So that's one of the big substantial changes that happened. Remember, it's way more substantial than a raw egg becoming a hard-boiled egg, right? But it appears the same in the way that you and I can receive it. Does that, does that make some sort of sense, even though it doesn't make all the sense in the world? And you know why it doesn't make sense? Because there is a God, but we're not him. We don't get to know everything about the created universe, okay? So that's what we're going to go forward with today. So in the very last thing I'm going to ask you, it's just going to be the parts of this one chalice stack here. Who can remember 
what this cloth that I lay on the altar first is called. Anybody remember the first one? Somebody has got it. Yeah, do you remember? Yeah, the corporal. Nice. Good job. Okay. Does anybody know what the second piece is? The little, the little square? Right there? This little guy has a cross on it. That one's tricky. I, I didn't give you that one on the quiz there. Does anybody know that one? Ooh, that's tough. It's uh, who was the um, author of the first reading today? Does anybody remember? Saint who? Starts with a B. Paul. <laughs> yeah, that's what this is called. It's called a Paul, but it's not, it's not spelled the same, right? And then we already did this, so what's the plate? The patent. Okay, and then what's on the patent right now? This is hard to do with one, the two hands floating in the air like this. The bread. Okay, and then I'm holding the... Does anybody know what this is that we wipe the chalice with? Yeah. No, just this, the, the cloth part. Does anybody know what that one is? Yeah? No, this one's called the purificator, right? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say it one more time, and then you're going to memorize it for life. That's not true. You won't memorize it for life, but try your best. So chalice, purificator, patent, the host, the bread, and then we got the Paul and the corporal. So we're going to keep reviewing this. So next time you see me, you're just going to get better and better at this, and then you'll know every single part of this whole thing. Okay, we got it? Okay. Now, I want everybody to do one more thing for me. I want everybody to bow your heads. Close your eyes, bow your heads, because we're going to pray today for your teachers, and we're going to do it all together. Okay, so let's pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good and gracious God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today, to be a part of the Eucharist and a part of this Mass. We thank you so much for our teachers, for the people in our life that teach us knowledge, that teach us how to tie our shoes, that show us the way when we don't know the way. We ask you to bless all the teachers here at St. Rose and bless all the teachers in our lives, especially our parents and our grandparents, our coaches, all of those people that take their time to devote to the young, to impart their knowledge on other people. We thank you, O oh Lord, for teachers, and we ask you to bless them, and we also ask for the prayers of St. John Bosco on this special day. And I call down your almighty blessing on all these teachers and students here present in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all today. Let us stand for our prayers of the faithful. Trusting in your merciful Lord, trusting in our merciful Lord from whom all good things come, let us offer all of our prayers and petitions to God our Father. For our church that during this Catholic Schools Week, we recognize the blessing of a church community and that God will always be with us, even through the t difficult moments. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear for the world, for a deeper commitment to stewardship on our planet, we, may we find ways to secure the earth and all its resources and climate our future generations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community and all of those who are vulnerable, to the cold weather, that they may stay warm and dry during this winter season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all of us at St. Rose School, that we practice the virtue of trustworthiness to God, our classmates, our families, and ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who are con contemplating a vocation in our church, may God lead them in the right direction to share their gifts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all the intentions in our heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear these, the prayers of your people. May they be in accord with your holy and divine will through Christ our Lord.
to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation made by your consecrated people in commemoration of blessed John Bosco be acceptable to you, we pray, O Lord, and grant that by participation in this mystery, we may reflect the pattern of your love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, Peter, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters. <clears throat> who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this holy meal give us strength, almighty God, so by the example of blessed John Bosco, we may show in our hearts and by our deeds, both fraternal charity and the light of truth, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.